Welcome to Face the Facts. I'm Nick Face, and alongside me today is our special friend, Phil Healy, program coordinator here at North Reading TV. Hey. How are you? Uh, doing all right. You can say, buddy. That's fine. <laughs> You're about to say. Absolutely. Uh, no, no. Thank you for having me on, man. Very, very happy to have you here. April 1st of this year, mm. if I was to tell you that the Red Sox would be in first place on June 1st, June 3rd, in that, in that kind of uh, schedule right there, would you look at me with like three eyeballs out of my head or what do you think? Yeah, probably a little, but yeah. all depends on you know, what the circumstances were. I'm still speechless on what we've been able to see so far in this two-month sample, basically, of, of the Boston Red Sox right mm -hmm. now. Just a little bit of an overview on how the team is. We're 32 and 22 as of this date right now. We'll keep it a mystery so people don't know what, <laughs> when we're taping this. Yeah, sure. They have a 593 winning percentage. They are 18 and 10 at home, which wow. is excellent. We yeah. have had not had a winning home record since 2013. Oh. And they're 14 and 12 on the road. Right now, they have a one game lead on the Orioles in the division. However, there's always going to be a little bit of a negative in this, too. They're only 500 against the division. That's Baltimore, New mm. York, Toronto, and Tampa. What are your overall impressions on this team? Well, I mean, just like anyone else, and I'm not going to. I don't want to burst the bubble. I think it's amazing the way yep. they're hitting. I mean, it's, you, know, you, you have two guys who are, like, one who, Jackie Bradley Jr., whose streak just ended at 29. Yep. And you have Bogarts, who is silently building up his streak. Now it's at 26. Very silently. We're at yeah. 26 games now. And Mookie Betts, he had, like, five or six home runs in, like, two Imagine or three that. games. Two games in a row on Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. He started a game, leadoff home run. His next uh -huh. at bat, same thing, home run. Did it again Wednesday. Just hits the recycle button. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far, and it's amazing that it's only been two months. It feels like it's been a little bit longer. Yeah, it's kind of felt like a season already. The sample size. Way. The sample size seems like we have a good team right now. For the yeah, I mean it's 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 June, which is it kind is. of weird because I I'm like oh yeah it is June, but. Yeah, I mean, they're it's a on a season. historic pace right now for how well their offense is doing. Uh -huh. As a team, they're hitting about 295 collectively. That's pretty good. With your lowest batting average guy, your catcher, which usually that happens. That's Christian Vasquez. Oh, okay. And uh, who's uh, they were, uh, were they switching over? Uh, Ryan Hannigan and Christian Vasquez, uh -huh. right, right, at, right in there. They also have emerged with Blake Swihart in left field. Uh -huh. Who would have thought that would have happened at the beginning of this year? Because he would catch, too, once yep, in a while. Yep, right? he was catching. Yeah. What they did was as soon as Vasquez was healthy enough to come back from the Tommy John, That's right. they, they needed to find a home for Swihart. Yeah. Now, the jury's still out on him, I feel. I yeah. still feel that he has things to prove. The offense, I hope this continues, but they're averaging about seven to eight runs a game, which yeah. is amazing. But here's the downfall. You can't go and let up 12 runs a game. Mm -hmm. That's where this team has to figure out if they're going to be one of the best teams in baseball or if we're just going to hit the ball and not care about pitching. So one of my questions that I'd like to answer here is, what is the biggest story so far on this season? To lead it off here on our show, oh, that's what good, is that's the biggest question. story? It's a good question. I don't know. I'll defer There's to a lot of different answers one. that you can go with. I would say to start right now, it has to be the Jackie Bradley story. Yeah. Here's a guy that when he started this season, it was a big question mark. We saw last July and August, a great month. He had about 10 home runs, hit the ball, about 400 average, looked awesome. Yeah. September came, and he just tailspinned. He just went downhill back to kind of the Jackie Bradley that we had saw from the past two, three years. Fast forward to this year, it's been a completely different player, a more focused player, a guy who's trusting himself in his ability of hitting the ball to all fields, and somebody that has been a legitimate threat in the lineup. In my opinion, <coughs> even before the 20, <coughs> excuse me, the 29 game getting hitting streak, I'm getting yeah. choked up about it. Jackie Bradley, to me, leads the Red Sox in the uh, fairy tale story of the season so far. 
Yeah, he he just got awarded, I guess, Player of the Month for uh, AL Player of the Month for May. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, he definitely is, man. I mean, there's so many like uh, uh, him uh, with right, yeah, the pit, uh, like the knuckleball pitcher is a great. That's story. a bright side right there. Yep. Even though he's only one, like he's like five and four. What is he like? Amazingly, he's five and four, yeah. but he has a two thirty ERA, yeah. which that right there is what you need to look at more. Yeah. A lot of people focus in on the win-loss record. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. What it means is Stephen Wright has had the most quality starts in all of baseball, yeah. and he's leading his team into some sort of a victory. Yeah, I mean, he finds a way. And it's weird, <laughs> in those games, they can't uh, score as many runs for him because they how they're matched up against. For the, whatever reason, it's a smaller run sample they yeah. give for Stephen Wright versus all the other pitchers. Now, this week, we've had... Two clunkers, basically. Mm -hmm. We've had Joe Kelly, who came and pitched on, on Wednesday, and he was mm -hmm. pathetic. Couldn't command anything. Fastball, changeup, no, couldn't find mm -hmm. the plate. If he threw it over the plate, they were hitting it all over the ballpark. Porcillo, who's been decent, yeah. he's been pretty 500. That's been his, that's been his career for the yeah, most part. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Completely had no command last uh, of the night on the Thursday yeah. of when he pitched. So that's something that has to change drastically. There was didn't seem like he had any focus, didn't seem like he was ready to pitch effectively last, uh, the other night. And was he just on short rest or was he No, nope, kinda... it was just the matter of just not being anywhere near to man up to a challenge, I guess. Being you know, not not perfect, yeah. but not having his game. We've had David Price, who's had a shaky start to his Boston career as well. Mm -hmm. He's off to a, a better start after they've fixed his, um, his delivery. Yeah. Apparently, he wasn't, uh, his leg kick wasn't high enough. Yeah, he wasn't like really going with it. Going but amazingly, Pedroia is the one to notice that, <laughs> not the pitching it? coach. So that uh, says how much coaching is really going on. Well, well that's also another story, too. It is another Lavello, story. Lavello, right? Like, Lavello is the yeah. bench coach. And Farrell yeah. is still there. Wink, wink. Yeah. Wink, wink. We'll have to see how this goes because, uh -huh. for whatever reason, they're not up to, I think, the capabilities of a pitching staff listening to Farrell anymore. Yeah. Lavulo may have a better approach when it comes to getting the best performance out of players. We saw that as a little bit of a sample size last year when Farrell was... Um, yeah, the medical leave. Uh, was on medical leave with his cancer. JVJ is definitely, though, number one for my story, but how can David Ortiz not be like 1A or 1B? He's had a crazy year so far. And he, he's also on historic, like, uh, trek for himself, too. When did he, he announced retirement, like, in November, I think, or October. Yeah, it was before, you know, the, the winter session. Now, I don't I know think. if you remember it on, on the show here. You I might know have been feelings. in the back. Yes. And, and, and when that story was announced, and I said it, I think Chris was on the show or, yeah. or one of those guys, and I said, ha, I'll believe it when I see it. And, I, and they looked at, and he looked at me, and he goes, what? He's going to retire. He's done. I go, you tell me that if David Ortiz doesn't hit 320, have 40, 50 home runs, 130 RBIs, that he's going to walk away from the game. I, I mean, I don't know. So I can't say. I'm not, for that. I'm not the guy. I mean, I don't know him. But, yeah, no, he is. I mean, and who knows if he'll slow down, if he slows down or if it takes a See, that's the on. biggest fear that we have to make sure that he stays healthy. Well, knock because on wood. I'll do knock right on now. wood. Yeah. The Achilles and his feet, I guess, are the things that oh, really yeah. bother him the most. So these days off that he does get are to just kind of make sure he stays in a healthy uh, stretch throughout the season, which yeah. I'm fine with. What he's doing, though, at age 40, so they say. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Going to his papers. Is remarkable. Yeah. Another night, another game, and other games this week that he had. Home run, home run, home run. He's on an amazing hitting streak himself. I think he's up oh, to about he? 16, 17 games, wow, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. That is just going under the radar as well. Weird. Well, he, I guess he recently, like within the last week, they asked, you know, we were talking to him in the locker room. He's like, no, I told you at the beginning of the year, we're, we're all going to hit. We're gonna, this team is going to hit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's you know, not lying. 
I have to tell you that I think a lot of this play, from, especially from the offense and how the team's doing so far, is because of Ortiz. I think these players really look up to him, sure. and I think that they want him to go out on the highest of note, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Every single one of these guys is producing. Yeah. So that's showing me that he's in these guys' mind and in their way of going about the game and helping to get the best product that's going out there. What he needs to do better is to get the pitchers on board no. with helping to win these ball games. Well, I don't think I think that's also a it's different dynamic too. It's a little tough, I would too. think too. Yeah, because isn't there always a division between like the you know hitters and if, you know the hitters and the pitchers? It's yeah. kind of a different ball game. They're very clicky, it seems. It, it is. Now, Ortiz is, has the other great story on the year, but again, we're seeing the best shortstop. Since Nomar Garcia Parra yeah. in Xander Bogarts right now. Yeah. He looks locked in. What you see is what you're going to get. Yeah. We've seen Xander now as our shortstop since 2014. A little bit of 2013 when the World Series was kicking in. Yep. But what we've seen from Xander is a consistently great hitter well, was he who's third? looking to get better and better. He, did he play third base in 2013? Third, yeah, he played a little bit of third. And, and remember, remember oh, how he right. kind of didn't hit as well when he had to move to third? Stephen Drew yeah. had, was at short for That's that right. um, short stretch there. Yeah. And he kind of went downhill a little bit. As soon as Drew was out of the picture and Bogarts yeah. was installed there, it's been crew, you know, yeah. it, it's been a great, ball, great, great story since then. What I like about Xander a lot is his approach when he swings. Yeah. His approach stays the same. Some guys, they get a little bit longer when they're in a specific count. Some shorten up. Xander stays right with the ball and right with a, right with a, a great approach of just staying in on the ball. Um, when you, what you see from there is a guy who's still learning how to know the game a little bit better here, but also learning how to hit the ball at any given location that it's pitched effectively to any part of the field. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, he seems to be able to pull it wherever he wants. I mean, yep. it plays the wall pretty well. Yes, he does. Yeah. What I also like from Xander is his glove. The glove's been very consistent and short. Yeah. There hasn't been many errors from him at all, and that's something that is also very important to see, too. So Xander and Pedroia up the middle are definitely doing their jobs there. So if I could uh, build on that slightly, another kind of great story, which, you know, it's under the radar mm -hmm. because it's not too flashy, Hanley Ramirez, his work at first. The work at first has been gold glove caliber. Yeah. And that's something that so many people were very quick to criticize with if he was going to be able to adjust to first base. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Definitely Hanley is a great story there. On the defensive note, yes. on the that's offensive awesome. note, he has his moments where he is absolutely lost at the plate. Yeah. I've set out a couple tweets during the game at a couple of the Red Sox reporters and says, <laughs> yeah. you know, not for nothing, but Hanley in the past about week, two weeks, he's 10 for his last 54 oh. with zero extra base hits. Can't happen. Yeah. Especially if you're the number five hitter supposed to be protecting Ortiz. So We'll see if that causes for a change in the lineup shortly, yeah. knowing how Farrell operates. He'll be there for another month, and we'll just have to battle it on out. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, they don't need him right now to be that guy. But They I mean, don't. I, we just, it, it's, it's a better team yeah. when you have him focusing and, and sticking with his approach. Now, his approach has changed. Yeah. His swing, it's not as long anymore. He's hitting for a better average. He's at about 290 right in that ballpark. Oh, wait, that's more than I would have thought. That's, um... What we are not seeing is the Hanley after he got hurt from last May last year hitting about 250, 240. Mm -hmm. So I guess we take it, but I will tell you that Hanley's a lot better than what we're seeing right now. Yeah. He is. He's a much better talent, and that needs to be uh, – he needs to ramp up his game if the Red Sox want to um, really continue to do well this season. Yeah, yeah. Mookie Betts has to have a discussion as well. We yeah. talked about it at the beginning here about his, you know, five home runs and seven at bats, yeah. which was pretty amazing That's on the insane. season. What a lot of people don't understand, and what was pretty crazy, is that this whole offensive uh, explosion that's mm -hmm. basically happened this season didn't really have anything to do with Mookie. 
Mookie is just now getting hot. Yeah. Which I think is fantastic. It's yeah. great news because Mookie, in my opinion, has the best potential out of the three killer bees. Really? That's Bogarts, Bradley, and Betts. Is that your own? I think. No, I, I, I'm it, stealing it. All right, I'm stealing enough. it. I like it though. But he's number one on, on my list. Yeah. His defense, his speed, mm. his bat, his ability to hit for power, batting average. That's a five tool player. And that's not to take anything away from Bogarts, but the one part of Bogarts' game that hasn't been developed yet is the power, which I'm okay with. Yeah. I'm fine with. If he's going to hit 350, hit 10 home runs a season, knock in 70 runs, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But Betts, to me, has the biggest mm. potential out of them all. Power-wise, Bradley may exceed all expectations from, bo the, uh, from both of those guys. Really? What we didn't understand and what we're seeing right now is that Bradley has very sneaky kind of power. Very sneaky. He hits the ball to all fields, and it's something that we may able to be able to project him at 25, 30 home runs a season. If he keeps it up, yeah. Expectations are very low for him. A lot of people said that if he hits 250, seven home runs, 60 RBIs, they're happy with that. Well, you know, unfortunately now, or fortunately for us, the bar's been raised. Now, Bradley should be a 300 hitter with 15, 20 home runs and maybe 80 RBI. I mean, I think it can happen. I think, I think it can, can happen. Yeah. The All-Star Game ballot was just released in this past week. Okay. And to your, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear this, there are many Red Sox who are topping the list. Leading those votes is Ortiz. Of DH, course. of course, yeah. right there. And then the next player on the list is actually Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh, yeah. So that's very well deserved right there. But what that means is that that needs to continue because right now yeah. if the All-Star Game was tomorrow, he would be starting. Oh, I'm sure. Bogarts is first in shortstops overall, so that's another great thing oh, to wow, see. That's nice. With also Pedroia second for second base. Travis Shaw is in third place for all third basemen. We haven't talked about him no, yet. I don't know. Mookie Betts is in there for, for um, recognition in his name. And um, that's, that's all great to that's hear. Nuts, yeah. It really is great to see in here. Now, we did not talk about Travis Shaw. That's another great story right there. Here's a guy that. Mm was supposed to be a bench player, or maybe even in Pawtucket when the season started. Oh. And he jumps in, and he's your third baseman. Killed the panda. Again, Killed the panda. April 1st, yeah. if we were to say Travis Shaw is your starting third baseman, and he's played just about every single game, hitting yeah. about a 300 average, that's amazing. What I do love, though, is the fact that Sandoval is nowhere near this team. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's out for, like, he's on oh, the he's DL. He's out for the season. Yeah. yeah, he's out for the season. You think that's legit or they just shut him down? I don't, the, he will never play another game in the Red Sox uniform. You really? You think? Never. Never. Well, they will is, release him. That, that, well, how much money do they lose if they release him? Or is that? They'd be on the hook for about $60 million, I believe. Oh, that's so, oh, my, oh, man. See you later. Well, you think if they, could they trade him off? or is that? I just, don't think anybody would want him. Oh, really? Really. I mean, even at a discounted rate, just some I don't sort of, think. Is it because of the salary? They'd be eating so much. They or? have to eat so much salary. But what a lot of people forget oh. is that Sherrington, when he left, yeah. left Dombrowski with many overpriced yeah. guys that were brought in that are nothing but garbage. Mm. Look at Pawtucket, for example. Right now. You have about, I think they said, $35 million. Those, a combination of three guys down there are making. That's Alan Craig. No, oh, Craig. That's yeah. Joe Kelly. That's Rusney Castillo. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, whatever happened to Kelly? That, that's the thing he that He never got developed. Made. Really? Because he's, he, he, was, he never panned out in Major League Baseball. And we, yeah, we put a. Well, it, was it was a seven-year, $72 million deal. But everyone was after him. Everybody was after the him. Yankees, and he's nothing yeah. but a bust. Oh, really? Yep. I can't. Well, we, that I, should be your left fielder right now. Yeah. But Blake Swihart's there. Weird. It shows you how much they think of him when you convert yeah. a catcher mid-season <laughs> to, to your yeah. left fielder. Sure. That shows yeah. a lot. So That's depressing. What 
Dombrowski right. brought in around, I think it was late August, beginning of September. It's a whole new regime over at Fenway right now. Whole yeah. new. Out with the old with Sherrington, in with the new. Dombrowski is not afraid to tell these stiffs that aren't producing on the Major League Club, take a hike. Yeah. You're going down to Pawtucket, just like Joe Kelly got this week. So what this shows me is a clear path to a winning ball club. They're not putting up with any foolishness. No, I mean, it's just a matter, the, the only thing really that gets in their way is pitching. And they it's get, the pitching, which we haven't really discussed no, as of no. yet, and that's something that we are absolutely going to go with right now. Okay. Pitching is what's holding this team back. Yeah. We've seen it all season long. The bullpen, pretty decent. Okay, yeah. it could be better, but the starting pitching has been horrible, minus Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright was supposed to be your fifth starter to start yeah. the season. Is he the second now, second or third? Oh, I, I would even put him as the ace right now, oh, tell really? you the truth. How he's pitching? Yeah. Oh, he's been really more good. consistent as Price. More consistent than I think, Price. I think Price is, is going Price to be is the is ace. Going to level out there. He though. is the ace, but Stephen Wright has yeah. been the unsung hero of why this team has a heartbeat right now yeah. of being able to have a winning product. Even though his record isn't where it is, Wright has kept them in the ball game. He has given them... An amazing boost on a staff that just looks completely decimated. He just did a he just pitched a complete game. Was it um, uh, Monday? Monday, Monday, Monday yeah. against the Orioles. That is correct. Yeah, that's insane against that team. Where are you standing on the Clay Buckholtz front? I think it was a great move to try to get him into the bullpen. Okay. I think, that's per, I think and now didn't they? Uh, he's in, he's moving to per, uh, Pawtucket. Pretty much, or is that? No, nope, that's Kelly. Kelly's back down but at Pawtucket they, now. But I thought they talked about Buckholtz in the same vein. Buckholtz After, would Wednesday have night? to accept a demotion okay. to Pawtucket, which so he's that, not going to do. So of course. What I Why was surprised he? with, I actually don't want Buckholtz in the bullpen. I don't actually want Buckholtz on this team, period. Sure. I don't. I think that what you saw from Clay Buckholtz at the beginning of his career, 2007, 2008, is a guy that you're not going to see anymore. Probably also because, I mean, that's eight years ago. Here's a guy hey. that... Here's a guy that has to have conditions absolutely perfect for him. If there's a raindrop that falls on his fingertip during the game, he will complain and he will pitch horribly. If the umpire isn't his best friend behind the plate, he will let up five runs. If he doesn't have his catcher behind the plate, he'll pout and moan. Yeah. He's pampered. He's got to have things perfect, and that's one of the reasons why Buckholtz does not belong on this team anymore. He belongs on a team like the Padres, where nobody will know your name. Sure, and it's sunny kind of like the that. Time. The song from Cheers: "You want to go where people know don't know you." Well, so. or uh, where everyone does know your or name. Does everybody does know? But your you name. might, you know, they want to know his name over yeah. in, over in, in San Diego sure. or a smaller market team because he can hide. He can't hide in Boston. Do you think it's just like the pressure of everything? I think the pressure has completely yeah. got to him. I think that he can't stand how fans are on his case all the time, or the media's on his case. Well, how, like, how did he flourish so early in his career? He early flourished kind of because like... nobody really knew him. Yeah. He came up as a new guy that caught lightning in a bottle, I think, and was able to deliver success. And as soon as something didn't go right, mm -hmm. he turned on everything else. I think he's still a good teammate because he's loyal to everybody that's in there. But he needs to understand that what he's doing has been very unacceptable for over two years now. What was it? Because it was last year it got shut down midway uh, through the season. He got or, hurt. Yeah, because yeah. he was doing decently I, I'm at the waiting for that year, phantom right? DL stint. Well, I thought it was going to happen from last week. I mean, it might. Well, the last couple of years, it's been kind of like he'll either start out strong or he'll like he'll get into and a then, good place. And then he'll take off the second half or start the yeah. first half and whatever or something like that. It'll, yeah, it'll like well, there will be conditions as you put yep. it. But uh, and I can't, you know, what was it in 2013 when he? I forget which game in the World Series against the Cardinals, but uh, yeah, he actually had a pretty decent game. Like yeah. he, they needed him. I think it might have been game four. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it was in St. Louis or not. It was, and he gave yeah. him like four or five innings. He gave him, he gave him a decent... Something. Yeah, exactly. Kept him in the game. He gave him something. It was better than nothing. Well, I mean, and yeah. I think he, whether he was legitimately injured or mm -hmm. like wasn't at full capacity, mm -hmm. I mean, he did 
I will always remember him fondly for that sort of thing. But, yeah, if he's got to go, he's got to go. So, without a doubt, it's been definitely pitching has been the biggest disappointment so far. But here's the next question. Can this improve? I mean, do you think it could get worse? I mean, that's the thing. I think it can get worse. Okay. I do think it can get worse, unfortunately. Um, The reason why I think it can get worse is that one of the one of the things that I think is awesome has been Stephen Wright, hmm. but one of the things that the knuckle a knuckleballer yeah. or a knuckleball pitcher can do is be inconsistent. We haven't seen anything like that yet, and one of the things that I've been big to note on is the ball that he has is so hard to catch. Hannigan and Vasquez are having a terrible time catching oh, the knuckleball, yeah. terrible time. So that's something that could be impacted a little bit. David Price, I think we're going to be okay with. I yeah. think that's fine. But the big problem is that there's so many teams out there right now that don't have pitching for us to trade for. Or if we trade for them, we're going to have to get rid of some guys that we may not want to. Yeah, you're talking about Mookie Betts. You're talking about I'm Mookie, talking about Mookie guys. Bradley, yeah. uh, Blake Swihart, all these guys yeah. that are probable names that teams would probably be interested in. Now... There are three names that I know of right now that are available. The question is, at what price? Yeah. We have the Braves' Julio Tehran, and he's been a pretty good pitcher for them. Braves yeah. are a terrible team. That may be one player that could come in. Here's the problem. A National League pitcher coming to the American League East is very dicey. Would you say our division, the AL East, is, is kind of the most offensive heavy? With Toronto, absolutely, and, and what Baltimore, we just saw yeah. from Baltimore, yes. The Even wild card of this is, is, is the Yankees, and the Rays are leading the league in home runs, yeah, like which is crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think our division is very tough. Yeah. So we do need the best pitching that's there. Another name, which is a very familiar name, and we had him from last September when he got signed to a minor league deal, came up, kind of reinvented his career. That's Rich Hill. Oh, Rich okay. Hill's playing for the A's, mm-hmm. and he's had an amazing season so far my issue with this though is the red sox could have just had him by signing him to a contract will the red sox give the a's prospects for a guy that's 36 years old and you don't know what is in store for him i mean it's not really in their dna right now that, to that, do that. that's risky yeah that's risky do i like rich hill i like rich hill but you got to look at the sample size here it's mm-hmm. not long enough in my opinion the guy that I personally would have traded Sandoval with, this was before the season started, because yeah. San Diego actually wanted him more than the Red Sox before that, that happened last oh, year. Before, yeah, James yeah. Shields. Here's a guy that's been with, with the Tampa Rays. Yeah, yeah. He has AL East experience. He knows these hitters. The problem is he's older. He's yeah. very hittable right now. He's a fly ball pitcher, and that might not develop well then. into Fenway Park. <laughs> yeah. That's dangerous. But he's a quality arm. He is yeah. going to give you innings, and that's something that the team desperately needs right now. Yeah, you need a workhorse right now. The yeah. other issue that they have is that there really isn't anybody in the minor leagues that's a quality pitching prospect. They have uh, a guy, Brian Johnson, who's out for uh, mental issues right now. All right. Uh, sa- very sad story right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's kind of uh, Henry that's... Owens, who has been up this year to, so yeah. far, cannot throws strikes consistently. He walks yeah. the ballpark, so that has to change before he comes up. Rolena Elias, who was traded with uh, Wade Miley uh, back yeah. in the offseason with Carson Smith, which is another move we have to, we'll have. we talk about in a minute. Okay. Uh, Elias has not pitched well. He's had a couple stints with the Sox, and he's been very hittable. Yeah. They've had uh, Joe Kelly back down there. You know that that's not going to happen. So starting pitching-wise, yeah. there aren't really any guys. Well, Rodriguez, right? Or Rodriguez is back. That's great that he's in the rotation. He's still restricted a little bit. Yeah. But this weekend series against the Blue Jays, when you have David Price, Stephen Wright, and uh, Eduardo Rodriguez lined up as your big three, they That'd ought to take two or three. And yeah. if they don't take two or three... They're in trouble. Is it in Toronto? It's home. It's home. It's home. It's home. Okay. Toronto took two or three last weekend. Yeah. So the Red Sox must take two of three. Yeah. Or there's going to be a lot of question marks raised about what the direction of this team is going to be. Next week, they go to San, uh, San Francisco. They have a two-game series, oh, okay. Tuesday, Wednesday. 
And then they who go they and play. play. Do you know who? Oh, well, I guess we wouldn't know. I would love to see a bum Gardner. I'm not sure who their pitch, who the pitchers will be yet. Yeah, I we'll think that would be a good matchup. Yeah, if it is Bumgarner, wouldn't it be cool to see the offense go up against yeah, him? Yeah, I'd exactly. like to see that. That's a good test. And then they play the Twins, who are not off to a great season so far. So well, that haven't... one that gets a little easier right okay. there. But the big thing here is pitching must improve. Yeah. Long story short, that's what they have to do. Now, one of the big concerns on why the depth is being tested Injuries aside, they've been okay, but there's one major blow that's going on with the team. That's Carson Smith. Yeah. Back in the offseason, one of Dombrowski's first moves was trading Wade Miley to the uh, Seattle Mariners. They got Carson Smith, who had a phenomenal season last year. Great setup man in, in Seattle. And Rolandis Elias. Two guys for a pitcher for, of Wade Riley's uh, ca caliber who gave them six, seven innings basically every time, yeah. just got up there, threw the ball. And he's doing actually really well with he Seattle He actually right is now. doing yeah. pretty well with Seattle. So I actually liked the trade yeah. when it happened because I really wasn't as big of a Miley, uh, a Miley fan because I thought they could do better. And he well, fluctuated. Well, looks like that trade is not going the Red Sox way because Smith being out – really hurts the bullpen. Yeah. Right now, they're relying, relying upon four guys, or maybe five, that have a tendency to break down. First is Robbie Ross, who came in and blew it last night, basically. We have Tozawa, and we know his story. If he's overused, yeah. he cannot, he, he, he's nothing. Koji, who's 40 years old, <laughs> and Craig Kimbrell, who can never be trusted for anything more than a three-out save. That's your bullpen. Well. The one that they're really leaning heavily on, though, right now is Matt Barnes, I a guy that, that's yeah. doing great with keeping inherited runners from scoring, leads all of baseball with it, but a guy that really doesn't have much of a track record yet. So they need another quality bullpen arm desperately. Or, I mean, would you convert any of the, um, the failed starters to that? The only one I would would be Kelly. That's what I was thinking. The only one I would be with Kelly, and that's a question to see how he would produce on that. And that, they've been talking about that since they've uh, acquired him, pretty much. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, he was supposed to be kind of uh, a, qual a young quality cardinal, you know. Well, Farrell had a good statement factor. after he got demoted. He goes, he has an amazing arm, golden yeah. arm, but if. You can't just throw a ball 98 miles an hour. Yeah. It's got to have movement. It's got to have command. It's, go, it's got to have better results than what we'll put up. Yeah. So maybe they'll convert him into a reliever at Pawtucket. We'll have to see. Overall, though, if the season were to end today, your overall projection right now, where do you see the Red Sox finishing as the, if, if, when the season ends? I think... It's going to be between them and Baltimore for uh, the division. Maybe, I mean, how far back is Toronto? Only a couple games? Or? Not too far. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a three-way. I think you could feasibly have the top three. You can have Toronto, Baltimore, and the Sox get into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, throw whatever title, wild card or whatever. I mean, at the very least, I think the Sox are going to get that a wild card mm -hmm. playoff game. Yep. I think at the at very least. I think pitching might get a little buoy. Maybe not get better or worse, or just kind of, uh, you know, they'll kind of uh, right the ship as much as they mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they, uh, Rodriguez gives them something that's a quality two or three. Mm -hmm. And maybe they get a Sonny Gray, or maybe they get someone who... Like that name. Yeah, well, I mean, it's people have been saying he has been pitching that well this year, but I mean, put him in a different uh, atmosphere. Uniform. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See what happens. I mean, he's a young kid, so I mean, it's just kind of like... Try to throw it out there. See what happens. Yeah, I think that they finish definitely at least with a wild card wild card slot it's going to be pitching yeah i mean that's it's not what the offense it. it's going to be pitching and if pitching comes and produces then this team could be a world series contender yeah and actually people talk a lot about power with this team well sure i mean they hit well yeah but they also like the Sox do pretty well right now they they're pretty resilient and they can hit out of yep uh, they bail out uh, a lot of their pitching they do but also, like, then the pitching well, will like, give it right back. Like, well, for Wednesday Priscilla, night. Priscilla and Kelly both didn't get the loss. Yeah. Yeah. That says a lot right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Because they're going to be able to put up nine runs, 12 yep. runs, whatever it would be, to get the job done. Yeah. So 
we hope that they continue to get the job done. We really do because they're a fun team to watch. They're exciting. They just got to get that next level for pitching and all. And who doesn't want to keep watching the Sox in August? You know what I mean? Well, With you, meaning. It's been very hard the past yeah. two summers yeah. without any Red Sox. It gets We're, really dull and boring around here. It's so true. And we get at, spoiled. We do get spoiled. And but we'll I, always be spoiled. Yeah, we so will. That's yes. right. Well, Phil, I want to thank you for coming on for Face the Facts today. Oh, no I really appreciate it, and we'll see you again next time, again, on Face the Facts. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.